<clears throat> is this the beginning of the end for the U.S. dollar and possibly American global dominance? Let's talk Whoa, about it. this is a heavy one. It's very high level, but we're going to try to make it informational and funny, guys. Um, here's the headline. Brazil, China strike trade agreement deal to ditch the U.S. dollar. Andrew, long story short, since 1944, most international trade has been done in U.S. dollars, even if it was between two countries that don't use U.S. dollars. Mm. But China and Brazil, which is two, two huge economies, huge populations, they're not going to do that anymore. They're just going to trade direct with each other. So you're saying a country that is the best at soccer in the country who cannot even get their soccer team into the World Cup at all are teaming up against America, kind of. Well, they're not teaming up against America necessarily, but they're just bypassing the system of converting everything into USD to do trade. Is it kind of like, oh yeah, I need to save some money, or like right now, like I'm getting charged an extra 5% on every transaction with you, Brazil. Like we should probably like stop doing this. Yeah, it's kind of like paying in cash at the, res at the Chinese restaurant to save like five or 10%. All right, guys, so what we're basically gonna do is, and of course we did not study macro, even microeconomics or geopolitics at Harvard, Stanford or whatever. We try to stay informed on this and we you know are intellectually honest but we're not experts on it so i don't want to go into the super super details about like what's going to happen here or this is going to happen here i don't know about the that, that kind of stuff but we are going to go through the different perspectives on the internet in the comments down below you can let us know how you feel you know but just keep it civil and let's try to have this be a productive conversation because this is Apparently, a very emotional for a lot of people. So, guys, whether or not you understood what the reserve currency was before this video, before this news came out, it doesn't matter. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys because we are going to have a positive conversation. All right, let's get to the internet comments. Somebody said, uh, is there any good news coming out about America anymore? And someone said, you know, good news doesn't make good content. This is just the media trying to freak people out, get more clicks, sell more ads, get more money. I mean, I think it's a good headline, but I would have to say from my limited knowledge, it is a significant move. Maybe, while albeit does not mean everything. Right. It possibly was sensationalized, but it also meant something. So maybe both are true. Somebody said the U.S. did it to ourselves, man. We were too busy trying to say that China's bad when they were giving out a good deal to the other countries that were second or third world that we were ignoring. We got to get our act together as the USA and maybe come to the deal with some better deals. Yeah, no, it's true that China was cutting a lot of deals with more developing countries or in developing economies and therefore they're building those allies. You know, that's something not that America wanted to do because they didn't see any interest in that and it didn't benefit America and here we are. And also America just is not competing on the same level it used to. That's that's a fact. Someone said, come on, man. I don't buy this China rising mumbo jumbo. They're going to be losing money on all those loans to those poor countries because those aren't run very well. They've got no good image or soft power respect in the developed world at all. Plus, man, the poor countries wouldn't even like them unless they needed them. Once their whole banking system falls apart, they're going to rebel against Winnie the Pooh. So nothing to worry about. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, economically, it's fine. They can switch to whatever currencies they want. I don't care if they trade in you. USD. It's more of the military power that I'm worried about. Well, are they referring to American military presence in Asia? Because, you know, the Pacific is just, it's just across the water. So, of course, actually, America still has a lot of power over there, albeit not really over China itself, but over a lot of the seas. Obviously, it helps yeah. Taiwan, South Korea, all this stuff. So, I guess, is that what they're referring to? Yeah, I mean, long story short, America for the longest time has pretty much been the biggest player in every region in the world, mm. maybe outside of a few, I mean, really everywhere. And obviously, uh, China is, is going to compete with the U S for Asia. Mm, yeah. But of, of course there's also the whole concept of like, wait, why do we need to control Asia if we're America? But of course there's the whole thing of like, that's why it's important because America needs to stay number well, one. Maybe, maybe that's why America was number one and dominated. So things so much because well, they wanted to dominate and they spent the price to do it. But other people are like, man, is that price worth it in 2023? Somebody said, what a joke of a story, man. This is just a drop in the bucket. These countries do not have a good plan. Brazil's known for butt lifts and soccer, not a superpower. <laughs> China's going to shrink in population. Nobody wants to live there, so they won't have elite brain immigration. They got a real estate bubble like Evergrande. Their whole country's a bunch of little emperors that are selfish, just do whatever they want. It's good for them, and they're just going to team up with other incompetent governments. I'm sick of hearing this story. It's a non-starter for me. Wow. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I, it could be the start of something. It probably doesn't mean everything. <laughs> 
But I mean, they made some valid they made points. Some valid points. I'm uh, not going to go point for point against them. I th- I think there was some truth in it. I think for me, I just go off what the global CEOs say because they own a lot of factories and companies and headquarters all around the world. Because mm. obviously, if you just talk to somebody over there, or you talk to somebody over here, or somebody over there, they're just biased for their own incentive and their own lens on the issue. But people who have incentives all over the world, they're just trying to make the most accurate read possible. Elon has a comment on it. We'll get to that later. Obviously, Ray Dalio as well. Somebody said, in the long term, it's going to be good for the USA because we're just not going to focus and police the world anymore. We can focus on ourselves. Mm. So, you know, we could just get things good in our own borders again. I don't care about the Panda Yuan replacing the petro dollar. It don't even make <laughs> me mad because in the long term, it's going to help us figure things out because we got a mess of things going on in our borders. Right. This is an interesting take. You guys let me know in the comments down below what you think about this comment. It essentially says in a different framing, like, Man, you know, I just got to stop partying. I got to stop worrying about other rumors that people got going on. I'm going to stop gossiping. I'm just going to worry about myself. I got to show myself self-love. Does America need more self-love? Ooh. Somebody said, once the austerity days come, all the boys and girls will stop sleeping around, partying, doing drugs all day, and have real families, just like World War II and the Golden Generation, forced to be wholesome and have nuclear families just due to the circumstances. I look forward to it. Wow. Wait, hey, this was like a fiery Southern Baptist preacher or something yeah, like man, that. Yeah, I, I bet the person who wrote this comment does sound like that. I, yeah. I, I'm just going to assume. Somebody did also say from England, you know, every empire ends. We Brits understand but listen, we still live on. We still have good lives, even though we're not able to dictate everything that goes on in every corner of the globe anymore. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it was nice colonizing everywhere. And, you know, now everybody speaks English at least. So that's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, guys. Uh, the contract between Brazil and China to even trade in the yuan was probably still written in English. Yeah, so they're saying... That basically you can, don't worry guys, you can still live a comfortable Western life without having to dominate the world. Right. We are quite happy in the Netherlands. We <laughs> gave it up. Uh, we used to dominate, but uh, you know, it's okay. We just oh, have yeah. what we have. We got a lot of stroop waffles. If you look at all the happiest places in the world. They're all up north. Yeah, they like don't try to uh, do too much, okay? <laughs> like we used to. Somebody said, uh, this is what Elon said, Andrew. We're getting into the billionaires. Elon, Ray Dalio, they basically were like, the USA has been doing a lot of heavy-handed bully moves on the rest of the world, mm-hmm. and they're kind of sick of it, whether that's printing so much money so other people's USD holdings are weaker because they're flooding the market. With Obviously, it's like a supply-demand equation. Um, other people said, yeah, listen, guys, I think Russia is doing a messed-up thing right now, but if we void their bonds, it does all also call in a question like the sanctity of the banking system hey america for very long you are a pretty cool bully a lot of people like your style they try to buy the same shoes that you wear <laughs> but somewhere along the road i have to stand up to you so i'm not taking your fee anymore <laughs> yeah we bought nikes for so long in jordans but now we want chow down and leaning oh. what's wrong with it <laughs> uh somebody said uh listen guys we might have been bullies all around the world but I'm a bully. I don't care. I'm American. So even though I guess the rest of the world is sick of America being bullies, I don't care because I'm trying to maintain dominance. And to me, that's my survival instinct. Um, this was pretty interesting, Andrew, because a lot of internet comments, I find that they try to be like faux intellectuals, sort of like taking everything, you know, global opinions into a matter. This was just straight... Yeah, sure, maybe. I just don't care, though. America number one. You know what I can respect about this comment is that this guy's playing for his team. Mm. He's he's cheering for... Unapologetic. Bro, he's unapologetic for going for the home team. And the home team is America. And he's like, hey, man, if America gained dominance of the world because we were dominant all around the world, doing all these things, having our hands in all these little cookie jars, then so be it. Yeah, yeah stay there. I think it's different. I do think American dominance over the last hundred years has definitely been uh, sold to us. And I could see why it totally been sold this way. As we are the good guys who dominated the world, the other people who dominated the world were bad right. guys. Like the world is better that we dominated it. I mean, I think obviously people actually, are going to feel To be way. honest, I actually think a majority of people, Andrew, in America feel the way as this past comment does. It's not really the people who study all these macroeconomics at an elite level. Somebody said, our politicians sold us out, man. They divided us on social issues while doing all this shady, complex stuff that regular citizens can't understand behind the scenes, man. They only care about re-election or getting rich. They don't care about the big things anymore. They don't even care about the small things anymore. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, Like, safety is such a huge issue around America right now, safety and crime. And those things are very, very divisive issues. I will say this. 
and I'll explain more later, but essentially, America, listen, you're not going to hate or shame or blame your way out of this issue. America's got to compete. And it seemed like that when America dominated, they deserved it because they were competing at a high level. Right, they're kicking everybody's butt, so you deserve to be number one. It's, it's almost like the, it's like if the Warriors stopped doing what they were needing to do to be a dynasty, then why would they be the preeminent well, dynasty? Think about right? it. Because it's the globe, global ranking, there is no favoritism because there is no larger governing body that like their God does not choose. Well, some people would think that God chose America, but I'm saying God is not picking favorites in this. It's just the country's got to compete. But what about manifest destiny? That's what God told me. Um, somebody said, it's not just the politicians. It's the entire society in general. Nobody cares about anything anymore. Not the larger community, not their micro neighborhood community. Nobody cares about patriotism. It's just about getting rich and being clout and getting neck tats and being lit. Yeah. In this whole Kardashian, Pete Davidson world that we've just become. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I was reading, uh, I was watching this video and I don't know how true it is, but it was from a reputable source and they were talking about now in America, people care more about making money more than they ever have in their life. Now right. that could be partially fueled by social media, but it could just be what happens in the future. So I think like just everybody is concerned young or old is concerned with making money, 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 money. And so it is kind of not good in a macro picture. Somebody said, I am in a third world country and I am very happy. This is happening. This is my perspective coming from my country. You have to understand. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? Listen, guys, the world is more globalized now. Everybody's perspective holds more weight than it used to. Somebody said, Ozzy, Oz for me, it's pretty amazing to see how far the U.S. has fallen between Trump and Biden. They just keep making bad mistakes that keep snowballing on each other. Yeah. It's pretty crazy to me. I never I mean, would I, have I feel like I feel like Democrats and Republicans, everybody got to take blame, man, because it's everybody, not just one bro. Party. Listen, we've been switching parties for the last, what, 20, 30 years for presidents. So I don't know, but I feel like bro. this four year presidential thing is just like, it's, it's an old structure that was working when America was dominant. But now that America is so disorganized, it almost seems like that's not enough time for a president to make an actual positive. Yeah, sort of like dunking on everybody work when Dwight Howard was young. You know what mm. I mean? And then I don't know. I'm not saying, you know, America's like Dwight Howard. I'm just saying. Um, somebody said, I hope it happens. I'm American, but I just think trying to run the entire world isn't working anymore. And we just got to focus on what we got going on within our borders. America needs self-love. But also this other comment said, man, well, if you look at it, everybody still wants to move to America. How come all the immigrants want to come here? So clearly we're still by far the best and, country. And I'll say this, guys. I acknowledge that that is absolutely true because I think the day-to-day -day lifestyle is still the best in America. It's got the best salaries. There's always something going on here. It's not like based in traditional culture, which is kind of boring, you know, if you're especially if you're American. I'll say this, though. What is happening on a geopolitical level dictating all these things and what's happening like on a day-to-day -day level at your mall or like the concert you went to they are pretty separate for a while like you don't really see the connection because there's a lot of layers uh in between those two things but david they just opened up a grand big old mall in new jersey it seems like america's doing fine um somebody said this is going to lead to world war three because once america knows it can't win anymore economically it's going to lean on the one thing that is dominant by and far and large it's the military yeah i hope it doesn't happen man yeah, I mean, I've heard this theory before. Like I said, I think that's uh, more of a doomsday one. But yeah, it's out there. Somebody said, it's just cyclical. Look at the cycle patterns. You know, everybody had 100 years. Spain, Portugal, France, Germany, the UK. And then, you know, the US had it since 1944. It's just cycling out. What are you talking about? America is the pattern breaker. America doesn't abide by rules. And American dominance will rain once again <laughs> somebody said well you know at the end of the day we can't do anything about it either way so why worry just take care of you and your family i guess you could buy gold and silver physically and other assets or crypto if you believe in that but yeah i just think this is a drop in the bucket the only way i'd worry about it is if there was like ten thousand drops in the bucket yeah who knows man maybe this whole headline will actually inspire americans to work harder and elect better people maybe who knows, man? Will the worrying turn into action? That's my question. Yeah, whoo! We got to get to our takeaways, Andrew. A lot of these comment sections have my brain thinking about a lot of things I do not think about on an everyday basis. Because, of course, we are talking about high-level macroeconomics right now. Andrew, do you think it was just a cost-saving measure? You know, we were joking earlier. It's just like, yeah, man, it's just like paying in cash at the Chinese restaurant. You know, they give you discount. I don't think it's a small drop in the bucket. I mean, it's definitely significant because it's China and Brazil. You know, no offense. This is not like a two smaller countries like uh, Uruguay and uh, 
Ecuador. Burma, who knows? Yeah. Burma, yeah. Like, it's not, yeah, like, uh, it, these are very significant players in the world economy. So if big dogs do it, then it might inspire a bunch of other medium or smaller dogs to do it. And if enough people do it, then no longer is it 60 or 70% of the world uses U.S. dollars, then maybe it's 50% and 40%. And Somebody that- said, uh, you know, honestly, this has always happened, but the last time it switched over from the British pound to the U.S. dollar, they were both white countries, so it was kind of viewed differently. Now it's more contentious, and not only that, it's between different races that look different, so there's a whole other racial element that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Yeah, I think there's a cultural racial element. Obviously, Brazil. There's a whole civilization, Latin like America, Eastern Hemisphere, and, Western Hemisphere thing. And China is, is Asia, you know? It's not it's not Europe on Europe. Yeah, for mm. sure. Um, somebody said, uh, I think both countries are not in good shape. The U.S., fought too many wars. They held too much power. It was too expensive. They printed money to pay for everything, which caused inflation. Each dollar's worth less. China pushed growth too hard. They sprinted in a marathon. They had a really inefficient and unpopular COVID policy that killed their economy. And uh, so they're both not in good shape. Mm. So Andrew, you have people fighting for 1A and 1B or 1 and 2, and they're both not in good shape. No, no I, I think I think both of them got big problems. China and America, for sure. Hey, big countries got big problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, somebody said they also have cultural issues for example the u.s is so divided and not focused on structural systems there's a social divide but they can't you have to be able to agree to keep the roads paved and the schools safe and everybody educated and basically people have to be able to disagree on identity issues while keeping everything else flowing yo is this gonna be kind of like in a war a war of attrition you know where it's like both sides are weak but it's just like who wears each other down the most versus who actually beats each other because we could argue, and I'm not sure because you know you'd have to. Yeah, get it's, experts too, it's of, too hard to calculate. Like yeah, a you'd million have to get factors. experts of both sides. But which side got more problems that are severe? I don't know. Somebody said uh, China is a bunch of spoiled only children. They got a super aging population. They got no young people due to the one child policy. It's way too competitive to be upward mobile in that country. There's crazy wealth inequality. Some people in Shanghai want to be super modern and global, more in line with Japan, Korea, and Singapore. Other people want to be conservative and do it their super own unappealing way where no young people want to be involved in that. So they've got cultural problems too. Everybody got problems, man. Everybody got problems. Um, so I guess what can you do, Andrew? I mean, like, this whole unipolar to dual polar discussion, I'm sure we can get into it for, like, a trillion hours. Like, there's so many symposiums on YouTube about it. Uh, how does it trickle down to an average person? Like we said earlier, maybe I do agree with that one comment. You should just take care of your finances. I guess you can be aware of this complex governing uh, watchwork mechanism, but at the end of the day, you're just, like, a tiny little person living within it, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think most people who are commenting, to be honest, don't even fully understand how the reserve currency is going to affect the rest of the world and this and that. I mean, but it is a headline, and I just think that you're not going to hate or blame your way out of this. I know a lot of people are directing their energy towards China or Brazil, but mostly China, right? And they're just like, man, see, that's why China's well, I can't go America. against Pele and in the, in the BBLs. <laughs> But at the end of the day, listen, you are not going to blame or shame your way out of this. Directing your energy towards China, which is essentially, you know, because you don't like talk to actual Chinese people or like you're not in that country. So it's not going to really matter. It's almost theoretical at that point. Yeah. People like to talk about China like it's a person. Yeah. Like it's a person they can talk to. Like, yeah, China's over there in the corner of that room messing with me in my house. No, it's not, guys. But what I'm saying is like, Man, the only people who are going to suffer are essentially innocent Asian people. So at the end of the day, I will say this. Sometimes it's cool to read the headlines and sort of know what's going on, but you shouldn't get too caught up in this geopolitics because you only have one life and you just got to you got just got to work hard yeah. and raise your family. That's and, it. And by the way, I absolutely do think that America and China are in competition and I hope that America wins the competition, but I hope that they win it by competing. Right. If they get their act together and they mitigate their downside, of course, every big country is always going to have big problems. But if they can mitigate the problems or at least, like, you know, not let it stop the other watch work, then they can be stay competitive. Yeah, but exactly. nobody guarantees you anything in this life, you know? Hey, you got to work hard. You got to work for it. Guys, you want that starting spot? Well, guess what? That point guard... It's kind of slacking right and, now. And That's like you China said, sees. I just feel like a lot of Americans right now, they're trying to hate, shame, and blame their way out of it. It's not going to make America stronger to just be like, I hate China and Chinese people in your mind. And then your life is a mess. Your community is a mess because obviously a community is made up of a bunch of micro lives collectively together in one yeah. cohesive unit. So I don't know, man. Hey, America will be great again 
by hating on China. <laughs> anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Guys, we try to give you the whole spectrum on this channel from AZN to all this BRICS reserve currency stuff. Uh, let us know. Keep it civil. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace.